Campus Base Assessment 2, December 2nd, December 3rd. This is for the CBA, and uh, we're going to look this over, and I'm going to read this for you. Make sure that you read the instructions up at the top. Read the selection and choose the best answer to each question, then fill in the answer on your answer document. Joe wrote the following paper to tell about his favorite hobby. Read Joe's paper and look for ways that he should revise it. When you have finished reading, answer the questions that follow. A wave. On the beaches around the world, from early in the morning to late at night, a familiar ritual occurred. Board toting swimmers head for the water, lie down on their fiberglass surfboards, and paddle far out into the ocean. Once there, they wait patiently for the perfect wave. As soon as it comes, they spring to their feet, balance themselves on their boards, and ride majestically to shore. Then they repeat the trip over and over again. Who are these wave riders? They are surfers, and they would probably tell you that the sport isn't as easy as it looks. Surfing requires certain materials, certain waves, and certain personality traits. Before people can begin riding the waves, they must gather the necessary equipment. A surfboard, which can be selected from a wide range of weights and styles, is needed first. Beginners usually get lighter, more buoyant boards, while experts choose heavier, more maneuverable boards. Next comes surfboard wax, a substance that is rubbed on the board to make it easier to grip. After that, a surfer may want to purchase a surfboard leash, a strap that connects the board to one of the surfer's ankles. The way the board won't, that way the board won't get lost when the surfer falls off. It takes a lot of practice to get really good at surfing and not fall off. And finally, Surfers who plan to swim in cold water will usually want to buy or rent a wetsuit to stay warm. Once surfers have the right equipment they need to find a good place to surf, figuring out where the best waves are requires both knowledge and experience. That's because wave conditions change with the tide and weather. Some places, however, are known to be prime surfing spots. These are called breaks, and when surfers find one, they paddle their surfboards out into it in a perfect wave which in the perfect wave for which they are patiently waiting. Catching that wave at the right time is difficult. If surfers try to get up on the wave too early, they'll fall backward. If they catch the wave too late, it'll knock them over. But if they catch it at just the right time, they'll feel the wave lifting them up on top of the water. When surfers find the right location, balance, and timing, they get to the part of surfing that makes all the effort worthwhile, riding the wave. After much practice, they'll learn to stand up on their board, balance it expertly on the wave, and fly gracefully toward the beach. You might think that a person has to travel to some famous beach in Hawaii or California to enjoy the sport of surfing. That's simply not the case. With more than 500 miles of coastline, people in Texas are offered ample opportunity to surf right here in their home state. And according to Duke Kohana Nomaku, the man credited for bringing the sport from Hawaii to the U.S. mainland, the best surfer out there is the one having the most fun. The next passage that you're going to read is an informational text. Original passage research from Generation Wired, Parade, October 9th, 2011, The Technology Generation. Different generations of kids have been identified by different descriptors. It doesn't take much thinking to know what, a, what adjective identifies the current generation of kids. They are wired. Today's teenagers have never lived without cell phones, iPods, video games, and the internet. They view technology as a luxury, but as an integral, not as a technology, but as an integral part of their everyday lives. The average teen sends more than 50 texts a day. Younger children spend over 10 hours a week playing video games. And the amount of time all kids spend online daily has tripled in the past 10 years. Parade, page 9. Furthermore, technology is changing at such a rapid pace that it is often difficult for parents and other parents to keep up with the challenges of supervising children's technology exposure. While technology is convenient and has many advantages, it must be supervised in minors the same way that the parents and teachers monitor many pastimes in which young people are involved. Yet, for many adults, the, identif the, uh, the idea of getting involved in teens' digital lives is a new concept. Many claim ignorance and even knowing how to begin in such supervision. 
With the gift of modern smartphones, for example, comes the ability to sit, go online, as well as to send and both receive messages and photos. The scope of these activities translates into headaches for parents, yet children and teenagers need guidance. Perhaps the biggest challenge in guiding today's digital, digitalized generation is monitoring texting. Kids 11 to 14 spend an average of 73 minutes a day texting. For older teens, it's closer to two hours, parade page 10. While 67% of parents feel that texting is hurting their kids, school performance, the behavior is similar to an addiction for many youngsters. When you get an unexpected text, the dopamine cells in the brain fire up, says Dr. No Dr. Nora Volkow, director of the National Institute of Drug Use. This surge is associated with the feelings of pleasure, similar to what addicts feel when indulging in drugs and alcohol. Many experts are now expressing concern for the overuse of cell phones by today's kids. Sherry Tuckle, director of MIT's Initiative of, on Technology and Cell, the author of Alone Together, feels that the effects of rampant texting are causing many teens to forget how to converse and interact and face uh, and interact face to face where facial expressions, body language, and tone play key roles in communication. Kids have told me that they almost don't know what they're feeling until they put it in a text, parade page 10, says Tuckle. In 2010, a television interview, billionaire and technology guru Bill Gates stated that he and his wife, Melinda, closely monitor the use of technology by their three children. The family, for example, has a basket in a garage where each person must deposit his or her cell phone upon entering the house. This practice has prevented the Gates household from becoming a tomb of silence where each member is socially engaged on cell phones and declines to participate in family time. While most texts are straightforward, messages, smartphones can also take and send photos. These, this convenience has led some teens to engage in a very dangerous practice of sexting, where they send lewd and suggestive photos of themselves or others. Studies show that teenage students are increasingly creating, sending, and receiving explicit pictures of themselves on their mobile telephones. Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott said, this practice is not just harmful to young Texans who appear in compromising photographs, it poses significant legal risks. Dallas Morning News, June 21st, 2011. In Texas, sending such illicit images by mobile phone is a misdemeanor, punishable by up to one year in jail and up to a $4,000 fine. Another aspect of technology that can baffle parents is the social network scene. According to a poll by Common Sense Media, 51% of American teens log on to social network sites more than once a day, and 22% report they log on more than 10 times per day, parade page 10. Teens often use sites such as Facebook to gauge their social life and the peer acceptance. Dr. Gwen O'Keefe, lead, lead author of the American Academy of Pediatrics 2011 report on the impact of social media on children, adolescents, and families, states a different perspective. The digital landscape is a positive place for kids. It promotes a lot of healthy habits like socialization and a sense of correctiveness to the greater world to causes. On the other hand, such sites have been known to lead to cyberbullying and other such negative interactions where it is often easier to attack someone online rather than face to face. It is also tougher for parents to monitor such sites since their access is likely to be limited at best. All most parents can hope for is setting guidelines for their children and urging them to refrain from posting too much personal information. Many parents worry that too much technology is short-circuiting their children's imaginations. Goat Scarborough, commentator on MSNBC's morning show, stated, We have had a hard and fast rule. Don't even think about bringing an iPod, touch, or an iPad to the table. The more I teach my children to carry on conversations at dinner, the more I have them running outside and less they're in front of any type of a computer screen and much more of an advantage that they'll have on all of their peers at school, page 10. The following selection was taken from the online Teen Inc. February 2011 essay writer. How Technology Affects Us by Mads 942 of Houston, Texas. Everyone has seen the moody withdrawn kid with music blasting out of his white earbuds or the girl rapidly texting on her phone. The youth of today 
are constantly immersed in technological advancements that promote nonstop communication and instant gratification, whether they're cell phones, gaming systems, laptops, or MP3 players. But these are technology. These are technological advancements. Are, are these technological advancements a good thing? I believe that the growth of technology has negatively influenced the social interactions of today's youth because it isolates individuals from reality, hinders communication, and perpetuates the concept of immediate satisfaction. Technology is a negative influence on us because it separates individuals from reality. The iPod is one example. By putting in your earbuds and immersing yourself in music while in public, you are disconnecting yourself from the real world. For some people, the main appeal of the iPod is that it preoccupies you so that you do not have to deal with the uncontrollable factors of everyday life, writes Crystal Song, a University of California student, on her website, Attack of the iZombie. The ability for some people to surround themselves with the unfamiliar, uh, with the unfamiliar by using their iPad, iPod is appealing because it rarely provides the listener with something unexpected or unknown. However, it can be argued that this is a bad thing. By constantly being cut off from personal interactions and new experiences because of a technological device, a generation of substandard social abilities is being groomed. If we do not have the face-to-face -face reality by experiencing new things, making personal relationships, and problem-solving, then we will never be able to function as it Technology hinders personal communication, which negatively impacts our age group. Although our culture heralds the internet as a technological wonder, there are suggestions that internet use has a negative influence on individuals and their social skills, writes Bob Alfonso in his article, Is This Internet Affecting the Social Skills of Our Children? Data shows that this Data shows that those who use the internet frequently spend over 100 minutes less time with friends and family than non-internet users, according to Norman H. Nye and, Sun and B. Sunshine Hilligus in their paper, The Impact of Internet Use on Sociability. The internet actually detracts from the communication abilities of society, especially the young. When our communication skills are gradually lessened, we begin spending less time talking to families and experiencing more daily stress and feeling more lonely and depressed, writes Alfonso. In our formative teen years, lack of personal communication due to excessive internet use can have an overall negative effect on mental and physical health. Communication skills are critical for everyone, yet the internet is determining this development. Today, or excuse me, technology, negatively affects us by perpetuating the mindset of immediate satisfaction. The creation of various portable technology devices has slowly ingrained the idea of instant gratification. With, with gadgets like the PS3 or Nintendo DS, which allows users to play games anywhere, or cell phones that let us keep in touch virtually everywhere and at any time, we grow up learning that whenever we want to pleasure uh, whenever we want pleasure or enjoyment, it will automatically be granted to us. Some argue that the internet has a positive effect on social interactions because it allows us to form friendships a lot online. However, the capacity to meet a virtual unlimited number of people through chat rooms, bulletin boards, and other services is actually extremely negative, writes John Francois Coge and Yamahauchi Yatuka in their paper, Untangling the Social Impact of the Internet. There are dangerous people on the internet who, who are a threat to young people. The ability to access anything and everything someone posts without knowing if their intent is malicious is a downside to the open transfer of information available on the internet. While Koje and Yatuka claim that the internet can foster openness, self-confidence, and a greater sense of ease and comfort in dealing with the others, the internet can provide opportunities by freeing those who are too depressed to conduct a social life in the real world. It is extremely unhealthy to make and sustain all of your social interactions online. We will not be positively impacted by the communicating through the computer screen if we already do not have the self-confidence to socially interact in reality. I believe the advancement of technology has negatively impacted our social interactions because it detaches us from what is happening around us obstructs communication, and spreads the concept of instant gratification. Society must be able to utilize technology while not allowing it to impede social interactions, particularly for those who are easily influenced during our formative years. Our world must learn to embrace technology, 
without allowing it to negatively impact the creation of functional adults in 